Hi, this is Tapcat. Welcome to the Banner Saga. Now, if you're not familiar with it, this game is often referred to along the lines of XCOM meets Norse mythology. That's not entirely accurate because even though the combat is turn-based and is on a similar map in some ways to XCOM, uh, every most of the combat is also melee oriented and the specifics of how uh, the, the game kind of ebbs and flows are very different. Also, Banner Saga has far more of a story, and you'll see that as we move along. Uh, but rather than try to describe it to you, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. Now, just be aware that uh, a cutscene is going to start here when I click the button. And so I will shut up and let the game do the talking for the next few minutes. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. Welcome back. So before we can kind of get into the game in earnest, there's a very basic combat tutorial. And in a way, that's not bad. At least, again, if you're not familiar with Banner Saga, this will give me a chance to talk you through the basics of combat. So uh, you can drag the screen around, as this thing says, if you want to you know, see a different part of the battlefield. I can also zoom in or out. Uh, it's not often you really need to zoom in, to be fair. Uh, let's go ahead and move this forward. Uh, now this does show the turn order. It essentially alternates where one of your guys will go and then one of theirs, and it keeps switching off between the two. That's actually one of the many ways in which this is different than XCOM. 
Uh, so the ring, as this says, is how you can tell which of your characters is active right now. And uh, the blue tiles are where you can move. You can also move into one of these gold tiles, but if you do, you're going to use a resource known as willpower. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Now, uh, our characters here are known as Varl. They're basically giants. And the Varl take up four tiles on this thing, where the humans only take up one. So, if you want to move, you simply place your cursor where you want. Now, they want me to come here. Uh, now, notice, by the way, this five that lit up on him. That's actually a preview that tells you how much a standard attack, how much damage it will do to him. Uh, I will go ahead and do what the game wants. We'll go ahead and step up. So, to target them, as it says, you click here. And um, before I do, though, hang on. Now, I can't... I, yeah, okay, these are his stats. So he has nine strength. This is strength. This is his armor. Now, just note, this enemy has four armor. So the way damage works is I have nine strength. You subtract the four armor that he has. I'm going to do five damage to him. Now, his health happens to be five. So this will be a one-shot kill. And um, alternatively, you can break his armor. You can reduce his armor value. Uh, this would be by two. Not a lot of sense in doing that, though, when I can just literally kill him right now. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me get rid of this window. So they're kind of explaining a lot of this. Now, one thing, strength is like two things. It's both your health and your attack value. So one thing that's really interesting about it, as you're in combat and you take damage, you know, like this guy's strength, you can see the bar is less than halfway. So I'm guessing his strength was around 11 or 12. And so when he hit, like if you only had four armor, he would be doing a lot of damage to you. Uh, but now that he's taken some damage, he is much weaker and less able to deal damage as well. So it definitely is a challenge managing this, you know, as you go. All right. So we've kind of already talked through all this. So if the game will permit me, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, willpower. I mentioned before you can use willpower when you're moving to move a little farther. But you can also click one of these stars when they come up. Like once you've picked your attack, and this works on either armor breaking or strength attacks. Uh, but you can click one of these or more if it's available. And what will happen is like it'll just keep adding one to whichever value you had here. So if I clicked this, we would do six damage. Now, since he only has five health, obviously that wouldn't make any sense. So we're just going to take him out. And now it's their turn. And so he is going to step up and presumably he's going, let's see, despite being at full strength, the chieftain will do little damage against your shield bangers high armor. So that was actually probably a silly attack. You know, he should have tried to break my armor instead. So here they're actually describing the willpower. Now you do only have so much. It depends on the character. I would say for most it's somewhere around four to five willpower, you know, for that guy. Um, so they want me to just step all the way up. And you can see a standard attack will do six against these guys. But this is a Warhawk. And Warhawk, they have a pretty cool ability called Tempest. So what you can do when you attack one guy, uh, he'll do like a sweeping arc in his attack. And he'll hit both. Now you use one willpower anytime you use a special attack like that. So he ended up killing them both, which is pretty sweet. 
Now, uh, this is the only guy left. And okay, now that there's only one of them, you go into pillage mode. So yeah, let's talk about that. So during pillage, each character moves in order. There are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Uh, because as I mentioned before, uh, the way it was working is it's always one of yours, then one of theirs, one of yours, then one of theirs, uh, but not in pillage mode. So now he just gets to go, you know, when it's time for him to go. Okay, uh, you won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but we can use willpower. So we'll do that. So this is exactly what I was saying. We were just at eight and he has nine health, but by clicking on that little star, now we're gonna do nine and a sword through the gut will just settle him right down. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. All right, well, we'll go ahead and try to help this guy with his bandit problem. Now, one thing also about Banner Saga is uh, there's a lot of story and relatively little of it is voiced dialogue like we were just hearing. So you get a lot of these text boxes. And so I'll do my best to read the key dialogue and stuff, but I'll also try to keep it short. So we get approached by a familiar man. And let's see how that goes. So Eirik, the steward of Strand, tells us that he manages the governor's business. Uh, Ubin, isn't it? Now we have to respond. So I will say, yes, it is. And the governor tells me, you'll be giving us a hand. Well, what did you have in mind? All right, scalp. Scalfings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. And it's funny, I don't even get an option to uh, say no. No, I don't want to do that. So here's the market. That's literally our only choice. We will go there. Let me handle this, says Eirik. We meander through rows of open face houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as we approach. And Eirik tells him, Had, I'm not in the mood today. For, for what? Talking to an idiot. The Scalfing's chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Had, so when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I, I don't want to talk to... They don't talk to me. 
Uh, all right. Eric, need some help here. <laughs> had I had a change of heart. I hope you do give us a hard time. Had sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? All right, we'll pay him. So we toss a sliver of silver on the table and had gestures meekly to a variety of junk from his stall. Take whatever you like. Only thing I'd like is the name of a place, says Eirik. So Had will tell us that it's a nobleman up by the East Wall, but that was months ago. That's the last he knows, though. So he slinks away or skulks away and disappears for a while until this blows over. So our bodyguard, Gunolf, Gunolf, asks if we're done here. And I say, Gunolf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? And he says, no, just bought them while you were walking around. Why? <laughs> uh, let's not be mean. They look good. I'm glad you care. All right. So we tell Eirik that we're not exactly impressed with his informant. And he agrees. He doesn't trust him either, but he used to be a scalping. And if they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. So is that a mead hall? And he says, best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these scowls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Yeah, I like, shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise, dude. Double the usual tithe. He probably didn't use the word dude, to be fair. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. So we will go to the Mead House. Again, we don't really have any other option. We arrive in front of what appears to be uh, the place they talked about. A few minutes later, Eirik shows up with a weather-beaten weather man introduced as Valgard. All right, let's do it. So Valgard kicks down the front door, and as we enter the hall, Eirik is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scalfings scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Now, there's no call for that. Wasting good food and drink? They are scum. So we have four men and they have two, four, six, eight. These are pretty weak fighters though. Um, mine are not powerhouses. He's very strong, but his armor kind of sucks. So uh, he tends to get beat up a lot, FYI. But that's neither here nor there. So for the moment, what we want to do is set ourselves up for the coming fight. And actually, I think what I'm going to do... There we go. Put you here. And... Hmm. You know, I hate to say this, but I'm going to shift everybody over one. Not everybody. Almost everybody. All right. Well, he can't actually get in close enough to do anything, which kind of sucks. So what I'm going to do, rather than move here and then let them move up and I'll get an attack, I'm actually going to hold my ground here. So... Uh, wait a second. All right, I'll rest. 
Now, I could come all the way up and grab this guy. I'd have to use two of my willpower to do it. All right. I'm going to stay the course here. I'm going to rest, I think, for most of this. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. He can't even get up there. This has its drawbacks as well, because I did want at least one turn. I'm going to move up just a hair. Uh, where I could attack the guys over on the far side here. And what's going to happen is I'm not going to get that. I will move him up since I can get an attack. And this guy's perfect because he's going to be very difficult for them to hurt. They'll waste a lot of attacks on him. So I will come here. And let's take half of his uh, health. So basically, he's going to be pretty worthless. Um, I will come here. He will get to attack next turn. I had hoped to use him to... Um, kind of fend off or break some armor on one of these guys and then use Gunolf to just wreck one or more of them. But uh, that's all right. He's strong enough and their armor is crap enough. I think I'll do okay. And uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and do this again. Because like I say, I expect for them to waste a lot of attacks on him. Now, um, yeah, let's just kill him. Well, that was downright rude, and I will, yeah, I'll do this. All right, Gunolf, um, I can't get to where I can stand next to more than one that would really take advantage of tempest so i will just do a normal attack and it's going to be a one-shot kill because he's a, a varl i got an extra bonus point of damage i believe didn't i no i guess i didn't never mind i thought i got a strength bonus but maybe they have to be like directly behind the guy i attacked yeah okay it was this guy he was behind him and I did get a point of damage in. All right. So it's his turn again, and uh, he's totally surrounded. So I'm going to keep doing this. Just keep trying to soak up attacks. And um, so far, he has taken no damage at all. Like, not to his armor or anything. Uh, I'll stay where I'm at with him. And I guess I can't kill the one guy... So I'm just going to hurt his armor a little bit. I'm pretty sure uh, the Varl here can take him out. Ubin, is that his name? Weird, it just says Shieldbanger. <laughs> I guess he doesn't merit a name. Okay, well, yeah, I can just kill him. No stress. So we'll do that. So like I said, there's a lot of enemies that we're fighting, but they're very weak. Now, here's where I'm going to get to use Tempest. And now some of them have halfway decent armor, but that's all right. We'll still line it up. So you saw all those red numbers. You get to hurt a number of them. All right, who, man, sometimes it's hard to tell, like, whose turn it even is. Okay, none of the guys he can hit have especially high strength. Um, I can almost kill that guy. In fact, yes, that's perfect. I'm always happier to get a kill than I am to just wound another guy. 
Okay, so now we're getting down in the numbers. I think I'm going to go ahead and start using... He is the one who has... Oh, no, he's not either. All right, it was the other guy. Uh, I thought he was the one who had that stone skin or stone shield or whatever they call it. We'll just do a normal attack. I'm fine with that. Let's hit him as hard as we can on the armor. He, okay. So now, uh, this kind of sucks. I actually cannot get him to a spot where he can hit anybody. So I'll just bring him forward. This is one disadvantage of being a Varl, by the way, is that you don't always have an easy time maneuvering the way you want to. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I want to do. Let me strike adjacent enemies in a spin attack. I see. I should have done it like this. Because they weren't adjacent. When I attacked that guy, he was on a diagonal. So that does not count. Yeah, I, I missed an opportunity there. But that's all right. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. So we're thinning them out quick now. There's just two left. And uh, they won't last long. Now, by the way, one thing about Tempest, uh, the Warhawk's ability, you do have to be careful there. Eh, yeah, whatever. Uh, you have to be careful because it can hit your own men too. It isn't just enemies. If your guy happens to be in the way, he'll take damage as well. All right. There's another one down. So we just have one left. And now we won't. And he had already gotten promoted, so I actually probably shouldn't have even done that. I should have just rested him and used somebody else. Uh, but unlike some games, actually the renown, as they call it, that you get, or experience, <laughs> um, you still get the benefit of it. Like, you can get enough that you could promote your, your guy, like, twice in rapid succession. It's not wasted. Uh, so anyway, Irik says, there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to wash off this blood. Irik is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Vognir. Next for Varl kingship, last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Uh, by the way, let me just apologize in advance. I uh, am not well versed at all in the correct pronunciation of the Scandinavian or Nordic tongues, however you want to do it, and made up names in that, you know, realm, especially like, I don't know the correct way to pronounce them. So you are going to get a very Americanized attempt at just a phonetic pronunciation. And uh, forgive me if it hurts your ears. I, I understand, but it's the best I can do. Uh, so Eric says, yeah, important guess. See what I deal with all day long? So um, these royal guests are showing up and Ubin is starting to figure out that Eric wanted us to have a reason to say kind of we've sorted things out to back him up. But he says, no, no, not me. It's the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? What is it? If you happen to stall our guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Well, we'll see. Maybe. So we hustle from the meat house, and to his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. All right. Well, before we go to the docks, it's starting to get a little bit late here in this 
episode. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Now, if you made it this far, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I would appreciate it if you'd consider giving this video a like, especially for the first part of a series. It does help other people find it. At any rate, we will pick up right where we're leaving off, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.